Hi, my name is Andriy. I'm a software engineer in the Android Framework team. I work on foldable, multi-display, and large-screen devices. And this session is about different displays supported by Android and how you can make your application work great on the current and next generations of the hardware. Let's dive in and see what's new. We will take a look at different possible screen and window features, explore design challenges with products in the market and on the horizon, and take a look at the, some of the new tools and APIs in Android 11. When designing an Android application, you would probably think about these three categories, phones, tablets, and desktops. They would roughly form three different categories of screen sizes that you could focus on. Users interact in different ways with each one of those and often have different expectations. For example, when using an application on a tablet, the users would typically hold the device further away and they can naturally expect having larger UI elements to make it easier to see and to touch. Today, foldable devices erase the boundaries between those categories and blend them into one, a single device that will be used in different configurations through the day. The same screen can become bigger or smaller, and the user would like to see the application working great in every state. From one hand, the users would like an app to preserve its state after folding or unfolding, to continue their flow from the same place. On the other hand, changing the state of a device is a signal that the user wants more convenience that the previous screen size would allow. Also, foldable hardware introduces visible folding lines or hinges that create a natural separation in the screen space. Let's take a look in more details. One of the nice features on foldable devices is being able to magically make the screen larger for a more laid back or immersive experience or to allow more room when it is needed for productivity. This gives a lot more screen real estate than you would typically have on a regular phone. And it creates a lot of opportunities for your application. If you only think about phone interfaces, you would normally try to declutter and minimize the number of presented elements. However, on a large screen, something like this would not be the best use of space. A resized phone interface would have a lot of empty spaces between elements. And since Android's resource management system would automatically try to keep the UI element sizes as close as possible to the original reference design, individual buttons, boxes, or tags can look relatively small. You can think of different ways of how you could use the space. For example, you could consider increasing the individual element sizes for large screens or give users easier ways of navigating between different screens with the master detail navigation pattern. Or, you can provide easier access to the features that your users will love by assigning the available space for shortcuts. This can reduce the depths of the screen hierarchies and avoid occluding the main content or area where the user was focused. Sometimes you will need to take the hardware properties into account. In most foldable devices, the hinge mechanisms or folds in the screen can create logical separations for how the user perceives the screen space. On some devices, a fold in the continuous display surface may not be as noticeable, so you can optionally use it as a separator, depending on the angle of the hinge. For example, if the device is flat and the screen is continuous, there is no reason to treat it in any different way than a regular non-foldable screen. But on others, there may be two physical panels connected with a hinge. An application can be expanded across both panels, and some content in the middle may be distorted or occluded. While this may actually be a desired state for media content, it also creates a challenge for things like horizontally laid out text or interactive elements. In this case, it will make sense to split the content into two containers. In previous examples, we've seen how your application can take advantage of the space and separate based on your desired UX. In this case, though, the separation will be dictated by the hardware properties of the device itself. At the same time, this challenge also creates a lot of opportunities for creative solutions and experiences. Once again, you can think of applying the traditional master detail layout or choosing to separate based on different types of your content or features. Or you can place the visual content separately from the interactive elements on different parts of the screen in your app. This works well for media applications and it's great for games. 
where the players will no longer need to block their view with their fingers if the controls are separated. The extra screen space gives you an opportunity to have a custom game controller without impairing the core visuals. Depending on the type of your application and your content, the same principles of separations can also be used on continuous folding screens if the hinge is at an angle, creating a logical split for the user. And remember that you can apply the same on large screen devices, just to organize the content better. Once again, when you are designing for foldables, you are effectively designing for the whole ecosystem that includes Android tablets and Chrome OS devices. Now, how would you know about those folds, gaps, and hinge angles? Great question. I am pleased to introduce you to the brand new Jetpack Window Manager library. It is a place where we will be developing new APIs for foldable devices, and also providing you a consistent API surface across different platform versions for some of the new and existing windowing features. The library will give you information about the layout of different display features within the bounds of your window, like folds and hinges, and also about the current state of the hinge. You can either request the current placement and angle of the hinge, or subscribe to a listener to be notified when the user folds or unfolds the device. The library is already publicly available in the alpha channel in the Jetpack repository. You can check the quick overview by following this link and test it on a device like Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. Support for these features in Android Emulator is also coming soon. But in the meantime, if you don't have access to the foldable hardware, you can provide your own mock implementation of the foldable configuration in the Jetpack library itself. This way, you can emulate any foldable device and use it for both manual and automated testing. All right, back to design patterns. Another way to use more screen space is to multitask. Our data shows that the larger the screen is, the more people use multi-window. And they would love to see your application adapting to the space they dedicate on the screen. At the very least, you can make sure that your application window is resizable and handles multi-window. In addition to that, you can implement features like drag and drop and cursor support, which will help not only on foldables, but on desktop environments and when operating with a stylus. Remember that the user can connect their phone to an external screen, and they will likely expect the app to work just as good in a freeform windowing environment and with keyboard and mouse. Another way to use the larger screen real estate in multi window is to have multiple instances of your app running at the same time. Think of working on two documents next to each other, or having multiple email composition windows up, or something totally different, like having two conversations with different people open in your messaging app to make context switching much easier for users. In this case, non-visual things like application class instance will remain singletons and shared, while visual entities like activities will be created for each window of the app. Visual instances could be in different positions, sizes, and configurations. They can even be on different displays. So make sure you're using the right visual context for loading resources and inflating your layouts. This all may seem like a great variety of states to consider. You need to know the bounds in which you design and develop. Android Compatibility Definition Document provides information about possible Android device configurations, including screen sizes and window sizes in multi-window. With regards to the smallest possible dimension, an activity window can be made as small as 320dp when running full screen, with at least 2 inches of physical width to allow enough space for touch targets and bottom navigation row. In multi-window, it can be made even smaller, down to, to 20 dp of the smallest dimension in split screen or floating window in mode. And the aspect ratio can vary from narrow and tall to square to very wide and short. The best practice is to respect the user's choice and implement an adaptive layout so that the user would be able to resize and place your application window according to their preference. However, it is not always possible to make your UI work for every imaginable configuration. You can set some reasonable restrictions on your Windows aspect ratio and size with existing Android manifest flags. Consider using them instead of marking your activity as non-resizable and locking the users in a single size. And those manifest flags can be used for just the opposite, to give Android a signal that your application 
can support an even greater variety of configurations than typically allowed by the system. For example, on some devices, there can be a small additional screen on the rear side. And if it makes sense for your app, you can declare support for very small window sizes using the same aspect ratio and size flags. For developers, the advice is the same as before. Code to expect runtime window size changes and test and declare support for resizable windows. This will not only make your app work well on foldables, but also on the hundreds of millions of existing large screen devices running Android and Chrome OS. We understand that the new foldable devices are still rather expensive, and getting all kinds of hardware is difficult. So we continue investing in the tooling and developer environment. Support for multi-display in the emulator is in the stable Android Studio channel, which can help you with testing various screen size configurations or changes at runtime. Running your application on a secondary display is also a good verification of whether you are using the context and window manager APIs correctly. We are also adding a dedicated emulator target with native freeform windowing environment. The windows in this mode are freely resizable and movable on the screen, just like on a desktop. This allows testing various window configurations and runtime resizing. It also means that you don't need a Chromebook to test your app if you would like to deliver a great experience on Chrome OS device. And a small sneak peek, we are also working on extended support for foldables in the emulator system, which will allow closer representation of different hardware configurations. We are integrating it with the Hinge Sensor API and support for Jetpack Window Manager features. And you will be able to control the Hinge state, receive updates in your application, and see how it will look like and feel like on a flexible screen at the same time. To make your life easier in Android 11, we deprecated some of the most confusing APIs related to displays and windows. Things like display size and metrics don't make much sense in the world where you need to know about the size of your window both when it is full screen and floating round. We are also getting rid of Window Manager Get Default Display API, which didn't scale well past single screen devices in the beginning of Android. And it would return an adjusted value that corresponds to the current context window size for compatibility. Instead, if you want to get the current display, you can now get it directly from context. Since context can be visual and non-visual, calling this on an activity will return the display on which it is currently shown. While calling it on a non-visual context, such as an application, is not allowed and it will throw an exception. For non-activity windows, you can create the context for the window type you're interested in. And finally, to get the size of the window, we introduced a new dedicated class called Window Metrics. Window Metrics give you information about the position and size of the window on screen, as well as currently applied insights from system windows, decorations, or physical display properties like cutouts. Like many things, Window Metrics are associated with windows via context. So to get an instance, make sure that you use the right visual context, such as the current activity. There are two methods. Current window metrics will return the values according to the window and system state at the moment. Maximum window metrics will describe the size of the largest potential area the window might occupy. As an example, for activities in multi-window mode, the maximum metrics returned are based on what the bounds would be if the user has expanded the activities task to cover the entire screen. We realize that you will need more than just an API in a new Android version. So we are working on adding window metrics to the Window Manager Jetpack library and make them accessible on older Android SDK targets. Behind the scenes, we are also adding a selection of new warnings in Lint and strict mode about potential incorrect use of context or some other Window Manager APIs. For foldable devices specifically, we are also adding a new hinge angle sensor type in Android 11. It can give you a reading of the current angle value in degrees. For example, you could use it to provide custom animations when the device is being opened or closed. Do consider, though, that listening to sensor readings continuously can be expensive for your battery, and that the accuracy of the sensor may vary significantly on different devices. Some may only report two values from the ends of their value ranges, like fully open and fully closed. Also keep in mind that the value range itself may be different depending on the type of the device. Fold-in devices like Samsung Galaxy Z Flip will return values from 0 to 180 degrees, 
while ranges on fold-out devices with screens on the outside can start at 180 and go all the way to 360 degrees. Therefore, we recommend using the Hinge-Stead API from Jetpack Window Manager library to learn about the state of the hinge in an easy and efficient way. I am so excited about this! We have looked at different possible screen and window configurations. We have checked new challenges and opportunities that the innovative hardware brings. And we have taken a first look at Chatpack Window Manager, new tools and APIs that Android 11 brings. Thank you so much for watching this session. Hope it was worth your time and you learned something useful or got a bit of my excitement about the future of mobile. Can't wait to see what you build next. Till the next time. Mm -hmm.